So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve the quadratic functions. So let's take for example, uh, examine the following quadratic function and determine the vertex maximum or minimum point, minimum or maximum value, the axis of symmetry, domain, range, and the opening of its graph of this function y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. All right, so let's do it. So we're going to start with uh, knowing the opening of this function, a quadratic function. So let's say we have this uh, sheet of the graph, a Cartesian plane, and we want to know if the graph opens upwards or downwards. So we're going to uh, review first the standard form, the quadratic function, which is actually y or the f of x, the same with y, equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So if the a is positive, that means the, uh, the graph opens upwards. So we don't know yet where it is located, but we know that it's opening upwards. If the a, which is actually the coefficient of x squared, is negative, it is um, opening downwards. So again, we don't know where it is located, but we are sure that it's opening downwards. If the a, meaning at the side of x squared, is negative. So now let's look at our given. The a here is positive too. So it is positive, that means it opens upwards. So we are sure that our graph looks like this. Then later on we will know where it is located. So we already know that our graph opens upwards, but we don't know where it is located. So it can be in the first quadrant, in the second quadrant, in the third quadrant or in the fourth quadrant or probably exactly at the center. So that's the reason why we need to find the vertex of the graph so that we will know where it is located, which is at the same time opening upwards. So the vertex is actually this. It's at the bottom of the graph. And how to get the vertex or the coordinate of this point. So basically there is a formula for uh, to find the x coordinate of the vertex and as well as the y coordinate. So for the x coordinate it's negative b over 2a which is actually simple to remember. While the y coordinate is a bit complex it's b squared minus 4ac all over 4a. Now let us solve for the x coordinate of our vertex. So the formula for the x coordinate is negative b over 2a. So based on our given, our b is negative 4 and uh, a is positive 2. So we substitute, it becomes negative of uh, negative 4 all over 2 times 2. Then negative times negative 4 is positive 4. 2 times 2 is 4. So it becomes 4 over 4 which is 4 divided by 4 equals 1. So the x coordinate of the vertex is 1. So that means the graph opening upwards is located here in x equals 1. But we are not yet sure where uh, it uh, where y coordinate it uh, belongs. So it is somewhere here in this line. And that is what we are going to find out next. So since we already know the x coordinate of our vertex, so let's supply it in our blank, which is 1. That's the x coordinate that we have solved a while ago. And then the y coordinate is still empty because we still have to solve it. So let's solve for the y coordinate of the vertex. 
it has a formula of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a. But for me, uh, personally, I don't use that formula to find the y-coordinate because uh, it's not easy to remember. And sometimes we might interchange the symbols, the values, or the, the variables, or the letters. And so what I uh, do after solving the x-coordinate is I'm going to use the exact given I just copy it y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 5 and then replace it with the x coordinate that we have solved so in this way i just need to memorize the x coordinate formula which is negative b over 2a and that is simpler to remember and then you may opt not to, to memorize the formula for the y coordinate but you can just copy the given and replace x by what you have solved so the x coordinate is 1 for the vertex so you can replace it based on the given so 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 5 again we we get the x equals 1 from the uh, from the vertex which is the x coordinate which is 1 that we have solved previously so 2 times uh, 1 because 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times 1 plus 5 so we just copied 2 times 1 is 2 4 times 1 is 4 and copy plus 5 and then uh, 2 minus 4 is negative 2 and then combine negative 2 and 5 it's positive 3 so the y coordinate is positive 3 so our vertex lies in 1 3 so if you use the formula b squared minus 4ac all over 4a, it's going to be the same result. So whatever uh, solution that you're going to do, it's going to be the same result. All right, so let's plot it. It's in x equals 1 and then in, it's in y equals 3. So the vertex is here and our graph lies exactly in vertex equals 1, 3. And it's opening upwards. Now let's identify the maximum and minimum point of the graph. So the graph has no maximum point since it's opening upwards and it's infinitely going up while it has minimum point which is actually the vertex. As you can see in the graph it's at the bottom of the graph. It's called the minimum point. For the maximum and minimum value if you are if you uh, are asked of the maximum and minimum value it's asking for the y value or the y coordinate so it doesn't have maximum value because it's opening upwards it will only have maximum point and maximum value if it's opening downwards so the minimum value here is equal to 3 because that is the y coordinate of the vertex that's the least y value of the graph that is y equals 3. The rest is going upwards. Now let's determine the axis of symmetry of this graph. So observe that the graph has um, like a twin um, graph which are mirroring. So it's actually this uh, a graph going at the left and the other one is at the right. So they are actually like a twin graph that which are connected. So they are actually uh, mirroring through this line at x equals 1. So if you're going to fold them, they are going to be exactly the same. So this line that is exactly uh, taking, the ha taking the half of the graph is actually the axis of symmetry so the axis of symmetry here of the this graph is x equals 1 next is we are going to determine the domain of the graph so before we are going to go to the exact graph let me uh, discuss first how to find the domain of a graph let's use a simpler graph first 
So the domain is actually all the values of x that is involved in the graph. So here in this example, so the graph is only involving from x equals 1 up to x equals 6. So that means the domain is from 1 to 6. As you can see, we are using a closed uh, bracket, a square bracket, because it means that 1 and 6 are part of the domain. Since based on the graph, it's using a solid endpoints. Now what if it's using a hollow points? That means the 1 and 6 are not part of the graph. So they should not be included in the domain. So how are you going to write it? It's going to be like this. So you just replace it with parentheses. So that means from 1 to 6, but the 1 and 6 are not part of the graph or it's not part of the domain. All right, so let's go back to our graph. So this was our graph opening upwards with the vertex 1, 3. And let's analyze the domain. So based on the graph, it, there is a um, graph going to the right infinitely because our graph moves to the right as well infinitely. It will continue to go upwards to the right as well. And it, there are graph also at the left side where uh, the graph to the left is going upward and to the right side infinitely. So that means all the values of x are involved in the in this graph. So when you write it in um, infinitely, it must be using parentheses. The, in, the the infinity is always paired with parentheses. So it's negative infinity to positive infinity. Or you can write it as all real numbers. That means all the values of x are part of the graph. Now let's move to finding the range. So before we are going to find the range of our graph, let's have first a basic graph. Let's say the same graph and we're going to find the range of this graph. So gra the range is actually the, all the values of y that is involved in the graph. So here, the y's which are involved in this graph is on, uh, are only from 1 to 7. Since, since the graph is using solid uh, endpoints, so that means the 1, the positive 1, positive 7 are part of the range. So the range will be a square bracket from 1 to 7. So it's using square bracket because it uh, the 1 and 7 are involved. Now if we are going to use hollow endpoints, that means 1 and 7 are not part of the graph. Uh, so we're going to use parentheses. So except for infinity, it's always parentheses for infinity. Now let's go back to our graph. So this was our graph and we are going to analyze its range. So based on the graph, so it's only from this part that are involved in the graph. Below 3, there's nothing. So it's going upwards from 3. So how are we going to write the range? So observe that it the 3 is part of the graph since it's a, a a solid point it's not hollow so 3 is part of the range so we use a square bracket for 3 and since it's going upwards so it's going to positive infinity as I said for infinity we always use a parenthesis now is it okay to write it in this way are they the same 3 positive infinity and then 3 it's not acceptable because it must be from smallest to biggest from left to right. So it must be from 3 and then positive infinity. It's wrong if you're going to write it from right to left. Thanks for watching and I hope you have learned from this video.
Please support my channel by pressing the subscribe button and write down my topics you want to learn in the comment section.